Watson, welcome back to folks. Welcome back to everyone that that has um, that attended the first workshop that we did kind of as an intro to GIS. Today we're going to actually try to do something in ARC, um, and we'll see how far we get. Um, but I think it's a nice step to actually getting to the point that you can begin investigating and finding your own data and begin manipulating it and working with it in ARC. Um, and as I noted in the last workshop. ArcMap um, is an Esri product, so it's kind of the industry standard. So if you're doing anything in GIS, at some point you're going to probably have to grapple with Arc um, and, and the different Esri kind of platforms. So it's important to have some familiarity with them um, as soon as possible. The first thing, maybe. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because I can do this. Okay. Anyway, um, so just as a quick overview for what I hope we can kind of tackle today is I want to just show you some different online data sets that kind of give you some general directions to investigate if you are working on a project. Um, and then I want us to do something in Photoshop and then hopefully be able to do something in ArcMap. Um, so just to begin, there are countless websites, right, that give you different types of GIS data, um, a lot of different government websites, a lot of different university websites, a lot of different NGOs, um, there's different public domain websites, so you can always kind of do some crafty Google searches, right, and see if you can find anything. It's important to remember, right, that the kind of two main file formats um, for different data is a vector and then a, rast <clears throat> a raster file, um, so depending on what you look for, you'll um, end up at different websites. But just to kind of do a quick sort of overview here, you know, increasingly, right, different government data is being made available for different projects. So you have the, the open government website that shows you data for different states, for different um, cities, even some international data. So it's a nice place to begin. Here, in, um, based in Kentucky, you can end up at the Kentucky Geography Network. So this has a different spatial data available. Um, it tends to be a combination of sort of more earth science stuff and then data that is more kind of demographic based. So again, you can sort of investigate things here. A really wonderful website, if I can get this to not do that. Okay. Is, is Earthworks. So this is um, a kind of centralized database that's overseen by different institutions. It has an array of data available, um, so uh, raster and vector data. You can do kind of different searches. There's international data available. Um, you can search by different kind of topics and different place names. So again, this is a wonderful site to, to look at if you're looking for specific data. And there's other sites that I link to here that you can spend time kind of looking through. I do want to point out, um, A, that the Library of Congress, right, has a lot of really great scanned maps. So if you're doing a historical project, you may want to see if you can find a map here that you then, hopefully by the end of today's workshop, be able to geo-reference yourself, um, if that's relevant to what your project is on. And then in terms of a just general <laughs> blog, that is regularly updated is the spatial reserves. So this is updated by kind of two GIS specialists. Oops. And they link to a lot of really wonderful data um, and different websites. They offer their own kind of analysis of how good the data is occasionally as well. Um, so it's a pretty trustworthy site for um, finding different kind of public access, public, um, publicly available information. So let's say, though, that you kind of want to make your own data. So there's different things you can do, but one of the kind of most common is called georeferencing. So this is when if you have a scanned paper map or aerial photos um, that don't already have geographic coordinates um, applied to them. So if you put them um, into 
your computer, if you scan them, they just function as an image, right? There's no metadata that's been applied to make it geospatial. So the process of georeferencing is the application of that type of metadata. So you're applying geographic coordinates to these files that then makes them readable within um, GIS software. Um, so to do this, you kind of need to know something about the place that you're looking at, right? Because ultimately what you're doing is you're matching um, images in the map or in the, or in the photo to images on the geospatial um, map, so the base map that you have opened up in your program. So if you know nothing about the place, it's going to be particularly clumsy to find matching points between those two images and link them up. So it pays to actually kind of know something about the area um, where your, your scanned images are from. So the first step typically is if you're scanning it yourself, you probably have to do some cleanup in Photoshop. You kind of have to straighten the image. Um, you can theoretically have to maybe adjust some colors. It just sort of depends um, on how the image looks and kind of your sort of philosophy behind what you're doing, right? There's different kind of philosophical arguments for why you might leave the image as is, or you might do some color correction, you might do some adjustments. So hopefully at this point, everyone's been able to download the TIFF file that I uploaded to the Google Drive. And so if you've opened that up in Photoshop, you can see that it is a map of Lexington. Yes, okay. So, let me open it up here myself. It's always disappointing. Well, this is what it'll look like ideally after you're done, right? So for folks that are looking at theirs, right, you should see that there's some, there's some, um, uh, extra stuff around the edges, right, that we want to crop out, and it's also just wonky looking, right? It's kind of to the side. Um, so the first thing to correct that side tilt is we want to use what's called the ruler feature. So if you look here to the side, mine is already the default image on the toolbar, um, but it may not be. It may be the eyedropper. So if you see what looks like an eyedrop, you want to hold that down and then just scroll to the side and find the ruler tool. and then cl click on that. And then all you need to do is click one point, so the kind of 1A area, that corner point of your map, and then drag it over to the 14A area, and then let go, and it should create a line between those two points, right? And then the next thing we wanna do is go up to image, and if you go to image rotation, right, so this is typically where you go if you want to flip it 90 degrees, 180 degrees. But what we're doing is we're not flipping at that kind of perfect amount. We're doing what's called the arbitrary flip. So if you go and click that, you should then see that it's going to flip its point whatever, some sort of decimal amount. Go ahead and click OK. And then if the magic machine works, it will have straightened the image, right? So this is a really wonderful feature, right, if you've scanned documents yourself, to kind of go ahead and kind of correct the orientation, right, so you want north pointing northward since we're dealing with maps, and that way when you import it into your GIS software, it more perfectly um, lines up for you then to be able to work with it compared to um, if you upload something into ARC that is at some bizarre kind of angle. The next thing you want to do is kind of trim the fat, right? So it's unnecessary to have all that kind of dead space. I typically also trim it so it's relatively close to the actual map content to the best of your ability, right? Like I, I typically there's no use to having the border left around the map if you're importing it and going to geo-reference it. Sometimes though, right, what you find is that the lines themselves are not maybe perfectly straight, so you kind of have to leave a little bit of room so you don't um, unintentionally cut off important information. So the crop icon, right, is just right above the ruler. And so when you cl click the cl crop tool, you end up with these kind of four corners that you then can kind of pull to tighten the image and then double click, and it should then give you the option to crop it. And then hopefully we end up with something that kind of looks like this. 
And again, right, depending on how your map looks, you might decide you want to do some more kind of editing to the image. You may want to change some of the coloring. You may want to make it brighter, things like that. I think this image looks pretty good for our purposes. So um, you can go ahead and save it once you're done. Save it someplace you can find it. And I should note that this map is available upstairs um, in the map collection here. Yeah, yeah, keep it as a tough, yeah. And just the default. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I just leave it as default. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Okay, so again, you just want to use the ruler tool and then the crop tool to kind of do some quick cleanup to the image. And then I think everyone's been able to open up ArcMap. So hopefully we can get this to kind of work for us. So once you've saved this, this, this is all we're going to do in Photoshop. I just wanted to show you um, a couple little things that you can do to kind of make your life easier once you get into ArcMap. So. So for folks that have saved their TIFF, go ahead and open up ArcMap. And I kind of apologize because I'm going to probably be jumping between the PowerPoint and ArcMap. So it may be a little choppy um, if you're watching this online. But the first thing you want to do is the kind of main toolbar at the top <laughs> that has file, edit, um, and the different kind of options up there. You want to click on customize. And this is where you can add additional toolbars. And so for our purposes, you want to search and find the georeferencing um, and go ahead and click it to activate it. And hopefully you should see something that looks like this kind of pop up on the screen. Yeah, OK. And so then you can drag it and lock it into the top of your window as well. So you can see how I, I just dragged it so it's just locked up there. Or you can drag it and kind of move it to whatever area you're most comfortable with. Um, and you can see, right, that there are a lot of different customizable things you can do with the toolbars. Um, so just depending on your project, usually Arc has already kind of set up something to help sort of speed up the process. So. It's just kind of a general walkthrough then. So this is hopefully what everyone is looking at at this point, right? So you have a lot of different kind of things happening when you open up ARC. You have the table of contents here to the side. So this is where the different layers, so your base map and any additional data you add is going to appear as a layer, a layer here to the side. You have your kind of standard options here to save. As with any project, right, save often. Um, so you don't end up losing anything you're working on. And then, you also have the zoom in and zoom out and the pan features that will become your best friends as you sort of move uh, between the uh, different layers. And then we have the kind of add data icon here and we have the kind of catalog feature over here. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna add a base map. So this is, whoops. 
If you hold down the little arrow next to the add data, you should see add base map as your second option. So if you click that, you can see that ARC has already kind of preset it up. So you're given some different options for the type of base map you would like to use. Um, for our purposes, I would suggest either streets or open street map. That kind of has the type of specific data we want. But depending on your project, right, the kind of topo map might make more sense or an aerial image might make more sense. So go ahead and click. And then you can just add it. Odds are it'll kind of freeze for a second and you'll kind of panic, but just kind of keep smiling. And you can ignore the hardware acceleration. It's just something with these computers in here are not um, quite fast enough for certain things, but it should be fine. Um, typically, if you, you would not have that error message come up. So this is what you end up with, right? You end up with, typically when you add the base map, it's scanned out at kind of the, the globe uh, level. You can see the scale appears up here. So, right, we kind of talked a little bit about scale in the last workshop. So as you kind of zoom in and zoom out on the, the map here in the display area, you'll see the scale um, automatically adjust. So if you're geo-referencing an image, the first thing you probably want to do then is zoom in. And so you can do this with just the little um, scroll thing in the middle of the mouse. And so you want to zoom in over the area that matches your image that you scanned, right? So for our purposes, it would be Lexington. So you just want to kind of keep going. Yeah, you, I'm sorry, like, do you mean just hold it down and move it? You can if you have the little pan, the little hand icon. You should be. <laughs> so an option is if you get horribly lost and you're like, I don't know where I am anymore, is you can go over to your layer side and then right click and then zoom to layer. And it's going to take you back out again. So then you can try again. There's no getting lost, right? Yes. And then you can also click the zoom icon, right, the little magnifying glass, and just, you know, use that then to just keep double clicking, or I'm sorry, just clicking over North America, and it'll slowly zoom you in. Oh, so I would just use the little scroll, the circle thing, and then if you just... Um, You, just wherever you are and you do that, it'll start zooming kind of in in that area. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then so you have a couple different options. So if you just want to go back, yes. So you can just So has everyone kind of found their way more or less to Lexington? Okay. So you kind of want to want to square it up in the middle of the page. And so we basically have the base map now, right, that will correspond with the image that we scanned. So we want to add that image now, right? So that way it'll create another layer and then we can begin matching the two of them up. So to do that, we need to find that saved image. So you're going to want to go over to the catalog here on the, on the kind of right side. And you see you have different options. 
So depending on kind of what you're doing, you may be connecting to some sort of server, you may be connecting to who knows what, but we want to add the folder that has your saved image in it. So to do that, you want to click the connect the folder icon. So it's like a little folder that has a plus sign above it. And hopefully when you do that, you should see something that looks like this, right, with your name in it. And then you can maneuver to where you saved that file. And when you click on that folder, it should connect it to Arc. So that way we can then upload the map into Arc Map. Yes. Okay, so this, that's really great. So one thing to realize whenever you're adding the, a file to ARC is you do not want to double click it. So you don't want to do what makes the most sense. So when you're adding like a JPEG or a TIFF file, you get a folder open, right, that you see your saved image. If you double click on it, it breaks it down even further. You do not want that because it will not work. So you want to go back one and just click the file itself and then click add. Yes, yeah, see, so add. Okay. No, 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 it's okay. Okay, so has everyone added the folder that contains their TIFF file? Has every, everyone added the folder that contains their TIFF file? Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just do it up here at the front for everybody. So you, once you've added that folder, you want to go back to the add data where we added our base map, but instead you want to click the first option. So you're just adding data yourself. And then hopefully if you have the look in folders here at the top, you can maneuver to that folder you have just connected and it should appear. If it does, excellent, and then click the image. Don't double click it, because you'll, you'll go too far. Click it once, and then you want to select add. You then will be asked to create pyramids. You can go ahead and click yes. Yeah, so it should not appear yet. It's just, it's waiting. It's in the wings. You pr you're slowly preparing it.
to appear as a real man. Okay. So then once the pyramids have been created, you're probably going to get unknown spatial reference as an error message. Makes sense, right? Because we haven't added any metadata to make this, um, make it have geo coordinates, right? So it's, to ARC, it's just a weird image that you've uploaded that doesn't have any spatial data to it. So ARC is just telling us what we already know about the um, image that we've added. So go ahead and click OK. And if everything is working smoothly, you should see your file up here. So it's been added to the kind of geo-referencing doc. Um, and this is how we'll then begin to add that layer and work with it. It also is added here to the side. So again, right, each layer you add in ARC is going to appear in your table of contents. But we were most interested in the geo-referencing tab for right now. So has everyone gotten to this point? Okay. So far, so good. So if you click the geo-referencing um, tab, you're given some different options here. So the first one is we want to just fit to display. And you can see this is my uncropped image that I inadvertently uploaded. So you can always go back and change it. But theoretically, yours all should be cropped and nice looking, right? So let me real quick change this. Delete. So again, right, if you right click your different layers, you're given options. So if you inadvertently add something you don't want, you can always right click and click remove. I can then go back to my add data. And then I can find the right one that says cropped. Unknown spatial reference, we already know that. Fit to display. And then you get something that looks like this, right? So it's laying on top of the base map. But it's still not matched up to reality, right? It's just kind of arbitrarily laying on top of it. So now we have to start connecting the um, image to the base map and create what's called control points. So this is where you find something on the map that matches something in reality and connect those two points. So, right, so essentially what we're doing is we're locating x, y coordinates and matching them between our scanned image and then the base map. So this is where you need to start thinking kind of um, critically, right, about what on your map matches stuff that we find today, right? And this will be shaped by how old the map is, by just kind of your knowledge of the place. So if you know that um, in the context of UK, maybe for example, that X dormitory is still located there, that might be an appropriate thing to kind of link between the two items. But if you don't know that, then that wouldn't be a smart choice, right? So you want to sort of think about um, places that would be the same on the map as they are on the base map. So things like road intersections typically are good. Um, you can, famous landmarks, right? Those types of things would be a good um, jumping off point to matching the um, image with the base map. Um, and so you can see, right, there's kind of different, different types of information you might want to look for. It kind of depends on if you're working in a more urban environment with your image or if it's kind of a more rural area. Um, and so what we're attempting to do, right, is we're kind of building the, um, or we're kind of laying bricks to essentially transform the image so that it will then have the necessary um, geographic coordinates to be read as geospatial data. And so you're going to add a series of these. You don't want to go overboard though, right? There's maybe a tendency to think, oh, the more I add, the better it automatically be. You want to be more strategic in how many you add. So one of the things that you might be tempted to do is you'll add a bunch of points in one corner, and that's not going to help you. You want to add 
coordinates or control points in kind of all four corners and then maybe a couple in the middle section. You can kind of think about it right when you put a, um, a fitted bed sheet on a bed. If you put too much pressure on one corner, it's all going to kind of flip up. So the same thing happens with this, right? Where if you concentrate all your points in the kind of bottom corner, when you then go to actually rectify the image, it's going to just look really wonky because you've given the, given the system the misinformation that this is the area only area of the map that has any geographic coordinates that can be applied to it. So you want to almost sort of divide the map into quadrants and then kind of find um, a place here that you can match, a place here, a place here, and a place here, and then a couple in the middle. And then if you kind of do this strategically, you'll get something that matches up pretty nicely. It should be noted though, right, that we're dealing with human error and human technology, so you might be working with a map that was incorrectly made or is sort of something doesn't match up. So it may always be slightly off. And that's one of the things you can look at once you've geo-referenced images, is you can see that perhaps the differences between the map and the base map are not just that because things have changed over time, but because the map maker um, you know, kind of incorrectly did something or sort of didn't have the right data at the time to actually appropriately map something. So we're always kind of dealing with um, different types of error, right, and trying to minimize those errors. <clears throat> so, let's see here. So the first thing we want to do is actually, so I've already kind of said this, right? You know, it's very important to kind of spread the control points across the entire area. Um, so what I would like you to do is actually look for Avenue of Champions on our scanned image. So this, right, this is going to make you kind of play around with kind of scrolling in, moving the map around to try to track that area down, using your pre-existing knowledge, right, of where is Avenue of Champions, what is, this, what is its proximity to the U University of Kentucky, things like that. So is anyone still struggling to get to this point? It just all shut down. That's never, that's never good. <laughs> oh, no. Yours is gone now, too. The scan image is gone. All I did was your mother left. I was. I was, but all of a sudden I just messed. Now, how do I get I know where it is, but I don't have a map on it. Did your shut No, I'm still back trying to get Oh, it was called Winkler Street, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. <coughs> Yeah, that's where Taylor is. Let's see who Scott Smile. Okay. And how old is he? 
I know you can't get me all the way there, but if you could even get yeah. me. <laughs> All right, so as some of you have guessed, right, Avenue of Champions did not exist in 1923. Instead, it was Winslow. So I just point this out, right, because if you're working in an urban area with this type of project, you're probably going to stumble across that where street names have been changed. So be careful as you're doing that and don't kind of get sloppy and kind of assume that you automatically kind of know something when maybe you don't. Similarly, right, MLK Boulevard did not exist in 1923. So when you're sort of picking those control points, make sure that you are certain that the road you're looking at is indeed the contemporary road that you're trying to match it up with and that things haven't kind of changed and you're just unaware of those changes. Is anyone still struggling to kind of get to this point? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we're actually going to begin aligning the two maps, theoretically. So this is the point where you have to start making decisions and think about what is a good place, what is a good location for a control point. Um, so this can be anything, right, that has not changed over time or has changed very minimally, so that you can kind of trust that the location on this map can match up with the location in reality. So just as an example, before I sort of set you loose to begin doing this, is what you wanna do is go up to this little icon here that says add control points. So it's actually right next to our tab with our map. When you click on this, you see that then when you scroll over your map, you suddenly have this little plus icon. So this is the first step is you wanna zoom in to a location. So I'm going to do, do Maxwell and Broadway, right? Two kind of major street intersections here in Lexington. They haven't changed too much over time. It's probably a pretty trustworthy site to put my first control point. So when you zoom in, you want to zoom in relatively close, not super close, right? But you want to be able to zoom in so the little plus icon kind of aligns very nicely with sort of the middle of the road. You click once you suddenly see that it doesn't show up very well, but theoretically it becomes this little green point that has a one next to it. Um, it doesn't show up too well on the PowerPoint though. 
So now you've said one. This is the point that I'm going to link to something in reality. You then have to scroll over and unclick the top layer. And then you need to scroll on your map and find the matching location. So the first time you do this, it's going to be funky because your map probably is not nicely placed over Maxwell and Broadway. So you're going to actually kind of have to explore the base map to find that location. I typically use the, um, the arrow keys on your keyboard. So that allows you, when you kind of hold it down, you can kind of easily sort of move around. And you just keep moving around. You can see how far off mine was, right? It was somewhere kind of almost off New Circle, and I'm trying to get it back to the Maxwell and Broadway location. And so you can see that, right? And so once you kind of get it scrolled over, you want to click again. So this is you telling ARC that these two places are the same. And so you want them to be matched up. And so you can see that you have a red one that appears over the base map image. And then you're done. That's one control point that you have added to your map. And so what happens is if you go back and add your, the visibility to our scanned map, you can see that it's matched it. It's laid it on top of what you said was Maxwell and Broadway. And it does this because we have the auto adjust feature on. So if you look up here at the top, you can see that auto adjust is on. Sometimes you want to turn that off just because it can get kind of too confusing. But I think for our purposes, it's a really nice first step to kind of get stuff sorted. OK. So if you have that one control point, go ahead and start adding other ones. Right, so this is where you kind of have free freedom to pick points that you think are appropriate. Again, right, you want to remember to not just have them all clustered around the same point. You kind of want to move out to the edges of the map to the best of your ability and have it be as evenly spread as possible. But so far, who has issues? Yeah. Okay, so if you inevitably make a mistake, what you want to do, so if you make a mistake and you accidentally add a point you don't want, you can go up to this icon right here. That's the little view link table. So this shows all the points. This shows all the points that you have made. And so then if you click one, so I only have one right now. So if I click it, you can see that that little middle icon lights up with the X on it. And if you click that, that will delete any points that you don't want. Right. So there's no, uh, there's no real errors, right? It's all just happy mistakes that can be corrected. Okay, so who all, who all is uh, struggling to kind of begin adding control points? Okay. No, no, of course, this is, this is the fun. Where are you at? Okay. I had to re add. Okay. So let me, that's a good thing to point out. So, again, just as a reminder, right, if you're kind of zoomed in to God knows where, right, on your map and you're trying to get back, 
You can always go to right click your layer, zoom to layer. And it's going to take you back out so you can see the entire image. And then you can try again. Right, so right click the layer, zoom to layer, and then you can begin zooming back in to find what you're looking for. So this is where I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I can't so it was the conference, right? I'm not sure what you were doing. I was doing something. Else. I was doing the least corners. This corner here. This corner here. Because it's easy to call. Right here. Yeah. Right. It's rows. Rows and avenue changes and line stuff. But first do the. And then I drag it later. Up here. I have to drag it all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'll find that on this map so you can zoom out. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. See that? Yeah. See, it doesn't Oh, no, it doesn't. No. So I don't know why. It's, it's where you can hit the back end. So if I back in, I'll. Kind of getting there. Okay, so it came back. Yeah. So how are we doing? I'm actually doing better. Okay, excellent. So Gwen has you guys beat. Um. <laughs> so what are some of the different control points folks are putting? Are you guys just doing road intersections? Yeah. Right, so again, it's always nice if you had some pre-existing knowledge to more quickly kind of match things up. Thank you. 
I don't think it's going to like light. I thought maybe it would show you. So I think it is. Like if you zoom in, it's just telling you this is where that point was. So for folks that have had issues getting it to work on their computer, would you like to come up here and add a control point to the, to the one I have up here? Just so you can kind of get a little bit of a feel for how to do this. I'm just going to schedule one appointment. Yeah, no, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> With you, the advantage of you being here. Yeah. Okay, so tell me. So I would go ahead and right click and then zoom to the area so that you can see the whole thing. Okay. And you can see that I added like the max width. Right. Thing. And so now you can just kind of pick kind of any of the coordinates or the, the, so the quadrants. This is the kind of the way that you're familiar yeah, with that you think that I was trying to make that first. So then you just kind of zoom in. And you probably want to find some sort of road intersection. Oh, 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 oh,
So a good question is how many control points do you ultimately want? And you probably want to stop at six, a minimal of, of probably three or four, but six is usually a good range. Um, and it can depend a little bit on how kind of big the map is and some different things. But if you have six, again, kind of scattered, kind of proportionally around the image, then usually it's going to work pretty well. Oh, so I'm close already. Right, yeah. So as it, because we have the auto adjust on, it'll start correcting it in real time. So by the time you get to your fourth or fifth control point, it should basically be on top. How can I get this back on there? Yeah, so we probably want to just do the So it told me that my points were not collinear, so that I and that it would warp the thing, but it didn't let me undo it. So what you want to do then is go up to the second little table on the condo, and then just find that point. So it should be your third one. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, and you then just undo no, it. No, you want to actually highlight it. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah go ahead. So just highlight that point, and then close the little X. So it's in the middle like one. This. Yeah. Yep, no, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I Perfect. Thank you for letting me. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Makes sense. Is there not a Walter? Do you know, Glenn? Is there a Walter? Walter? Off of Georgetown Street. Oh, yeah. I think I picked one that there is the. It's probably yeah. named something different. Yeah. yeah. It usually puts you near where you were. Right. So. <laughs> So let me ask you a question. Yeah, I could not well. find the street. Yeah. So I put it on the closest street. But that might yeah. not be right, right? right. And that's the gamble you're going to take, right? Because, because, it's, it's, it's because it was Walter here. Mm -hmm. And there's um, ways to check like how streets have changed names. So if they were doing like a project, right. you could double check something like that. I'm kind of on the edge here, so mm -hmm. I guess. So if I wanted to undo yeah. it, so though, it all I'd have to do is go up here. Yeah, if you don't like it. And then. Just match up that number. And then X. Yeah. 
Trying to find a good spot. Um, and sometimes it is hard, particularly when you're looking at it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you should tell the people if you were <laughs> yes watching, yes this, it's not you. right was, so due to issues with arc and the computers um christy who's <laughs> one of the folks that came here in person is actually completing this part on the computer here in the front oh, wow. this is a good oh. What does that mean? so it's looking it's yeah so i'm sorry go go back up I'm sorry, just the little arrow. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's you're good. That is what you said to do. Right? Yeah, so this is the folder. I'm sorry, I guess I should I and this is the how it will be saved. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so the output is just the folder location, but the actual name is and failed to save raster data set. You're just terrible luck. I, I'm cursed. Oh, yeah, with this stuff. I don't know why it's doing that. Here, oh, no. oh, yeah, okay. 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 Okay, so did anyone get it to work or did everyone get like the weird raster? The re so if you click the update georeferencing, like the first option, this is another way to just save it to um, the, the image itself rather than creating a separate one. So that is an option as well. Typically, you probably want to save it as a separate one. I'm not sure why it's saying the, the error message, um, but that, that would then allow you to kind of have the two. So, so if you hold it down, you should see the, the first option is the update. So if you select that, you can see if you just hold it over how it says save the current uh, work to the data set. So that's theoretically it, right? I mean, you should, if everything kind of works and your base map doesn't disappear and the program doesn't freeze on itself, you can then um, upload this and have it actually appear as um, a geo-referenced item. And so that's more or less all I have. Um, one of the things that I didn't talk about that if you really kind of get invested in this type of work is you have different transformation options. So these are all just the kind of um, geometry kind of math equations that are actually being used to convert the cells and kind of have things align. It's above my head. I don't quite understand the actual math behind some of them, but typically you want to either do the first order or the second order. That appears to be the most reliable for the um, for geo referencing. And if you get into really specialized uh, stuff, you might find yourself uh, selecting a different option. But you can see if we We keep move through. So right, you can see that the, just a little description of the different types of transformations depending on what you're doing. Um, but like I say, most of the time, the first or the second order. Um, you can sometimes try the different ones and kind of see if they align a little better than others. And so you can kind of play around with it. But are there any lingering kind of concerns or questions? As I mentioned at the end of the last workshop, if you do want to come chat with me, I'm happy to do so. Um, and we can try to see if we can find a computer where ARC works. Um, otherwise, but there's no questions. So I think we're going to end the recording. Oh, the next, is it mine again or which one? Okay, so the next workshop is April 3rd. Is that, I think it's April 3rd. Yes. Yeah, so it's April 3rd, and we're actually going to do, be focusing on web mapping, so we'll be looking at some of the more common web mapping um, programs that exist. So we won't really be messing with ARC, so if you've been frustrated by ARC, please come to the next one because we won't be working with ARC. Um, but is there anything else? Okay, so I think we're going to end the recording, and thanks for everyone that tuned in, um, and thanks to everyone that came. Um, okay.